fiber tips. <laughs> What is going on peeps, it's your boy Ellis, um, don't watch my attire, I'm a bit creased up at the moment. Um, yeah, I didn't really plan on making this video, but I'm going in town now and I've got my camera and why not be productive? As you guys know, I've got a new car, obviously my Cobra, my Cupra, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've had it for around a month now, actually, like, give or take like two, three days, I've had it for around a month now. And I've been trying to find... I'm gonna say I've been trying to actually find a problem with it because obviously you know once you get a new car you have to make that three things I hate not three things but a few things I hate about my new car three things I like blah 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 it might take me a while but so I haven't found a fault so far um, like I'm I'll go get I'll get in that in a separate video but the point of this video is to discuss that one thing that I <laughs> <laughs> How do I own this car? Anyways, the point of this video is to discuss that one thing that I do hate about the Seat Leon. Maybe not the car itself, but the the structure of the brand and, and how they've put like this specific model together. So I'm not sure the year that they released it. I think it was 2012 that they released the first the first the Mark III Cupra. And they released it in a 265 version, all right? So the reason that 265, 265 version, like, was not one of the fastest car, front wheel drive cars around the Nurburgring, blah, 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 setting records until the Type Pass came out. Then they released the 280 version, which is the one I've got. Um, I, I weren't really paying much attention when I got it about like the other, the other variant, the other variants that they have. But anyways, I was saying they released the 280 version, which is the one I've got. Then they released. I think that this is 2014, so I'm not sure if they released in 2013, 14. But I'm thinking that, anyways, then they released the 290 version, which is the 2015 version, 2015, 16 version, I think it is. And then they released the three. Oh my word! Then they released the, the Cooper 300. So it's just like it annoys me because when when you buy a car, you kind of want to always have the best one in a sense and it's like every year they're changing the car i mean it's still the seat leon cupra but that 290 280 300 makes a massive difference when someone wants to purchase the car like you know it might be a couple of grand different but you like if you're gonna buy a new car you don't want to buy the 265 version you would like to buy the 300 version like now i would like to have the 300 version because that's the best one so if they ever if they had released if the for example if the car that they've released 2014 was the was Cooper 300 which I don't see why they're giving it the name such like that like it's not a special edition car it's just another facelift in a sense and I don't think they go they went about went about it correctly doing the facelifts because like take for example the 135i the 135i whatever year it came out they've only just done a facelift and they called it the 240i the two the the, yeah, the 240i, which which in that's 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 okay. They upgraded the speed, blah blah blah, horses and all that good stuff, which which is fair enough. That's a that's a good upgrade, but it wasn't like one year after the 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 135i came out or two years after the one. You know, it gave it gave the 135i a bit of time to to do its thing, and I don't think the Leon Cooper brand model has done that. It's just one after the other after the other. And the worst part is now they're releasing a Cooper a Cooper R. Now they're releasing a Cooper R, which is really annoying because all the other versions of the Cooper MK1 and MK2 they've all been called Cooper Rs, and this one is the only one that they've given a specific number to represent the horsepower. Now the Cooper R is going to have 310 bhp. It's going to be more hardcore, more this, more that, more, more that. And it's just like being an owner of the 280. I'm just thinking. The depreciation, obviously whenever you buy a car anyways it depreciates but the depreciation is going to be so much more because of all the other ones that you can get you know what I mean? like yes you'd get a 280 if your budget's tight but if you're really shopping for a Cooper you want to get the new one you probably won't go for the, the Cobra R because that's going to be limited runs I think it's 799 worldwide 
that that I can't I can understand that's like that's a limited edition car but like take for example the Golf as well the Golf R they released the Golf R I think it was called 7 and then they released the 7.5 it's fine because if they gave it that that specific name like the Golf R 300 the Golf R 320 like I don't think it's it makes it makes the gen the let the the previous generation less desirable in my opinion so I'm, I don't think there's any 265s running around I haven't seen one and I just don't want to see no one pull up next to me with a 290 to be honest like I just or a 300 because I'll just be annoyed like if it was a facelift then fair enough but it's not a facelift it's just I think of it as a facelift it's just like another year which is really frustrating so that's the only thing that's really bugging me about this car I'm going to completely go off topic here but you remember when McLaren just came out and they released the 12C I think it was a 12C year and that car was amazing and then the year after they released like some 650 or 750 or whatnot and then the 12C took a massive depreciation and then like a year after that or a few months they, re they announced a different one they were slowly getting the brand like structured like they had the sports series the comfort series the hyper series and whatnot I mean obviously th this is just one model so that's why I'm saying why do they have so many different variants so many different names just give it one name and do a facelift you get what I mean that's 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 where I'm getting at. Just give it one name and do a facelift. <clears throat> and the Coupe, the Cooper R, which is the limited edition one, and that's that's understandably a different car. Like that's like the top, that's like the hardcore version. Like for example, the VXR had the VXR Nurburgring Ring Edition. You know what I mean? It never had the VXR, then the VXR 2, 2, 202, then the VXR 205, blah blah blah. It had the VXR, the VXR Nurburgring Ring Edition, and I think that had Club Sport. Blah. blah. They give they gave them different names, but not like just. I don't know, it may be just been me being picky, but that's the only thought I have with this car so far. Apologies, I've been ramble, rambling on a lot. I'll give you... <laughs> oh, I love this thing. Yeah. Hopefully that all made sense. I am not going there to curb my wheels. Oh wow, his wheel got curved. Well, he, he didn't get curved because obviously he's got like wider tire, like, like fatter tire, so it doesn't really curve the wheel. But I'm gonna curve mine, so I'm not going there. Oh, look at the RS6. Ooh. Ah, yeah. So that's pretty much it for this video. I mean, there's a few more things I actually want to do today. Um, I'm gonna be doing a few mods. Yay! I'm actually really excited to do a few mods to this car. So I'm gonna go around a few garages and and see some, get some figures together and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I've been talking to someone on Instagram. He has a 290 and he's been telling me a bit some the mods that he has and I basically just gonna copy his but anyway, I'll, I'll go over that in a second. Oh, look at that cold. Oh, look at that Mustang Mustang gets love Mustang Okay, so as I was saying, there's a few more things I'd like to do to the car. I'm quickly gonna go to one of these places that I went to when I first got my VXR like three years ago, and I wanted to get it because I wanted a white VXR, but I had it, but I got a black one, so I wanted to wrap it white. I went to this place and just like it's like a grand to wrap it like gloss or white. I'm like, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Anyways, I want to get like this bit down here. I can't. I might be able to wrap it myself, but I'm probably too lazy, so I'm gonna see how much they'll charge me, and to get like the whole front end like blacked out. And then I want to do some inquiry about my exhaust because I want the car to be a tad bit louder. So I'm going to go to this garage and see the figures of getting some stuff sorted for the exhaust. I'm not going to give exact specifications of what I want, want done. I'll do it in like a separate mod list video that I'll probably be doing like two videos after this one or so. But yeah, I'm going to go check those out now. Oh... I'm sighting an M2 now. I didn't expect this when I came down here, like an M2, like the Alcantara, the race. Oh, I love this car. Like, it's, oh. I think those are the competition wheels. Damn. Carbon fiber tips. The whole of everything just be blacked out. I'm gonna get a front spoiler. 
Yes, yeah, a show car, if it's you want to call it that. Show car. Okay, then. Stop hating. Anyway, that's it, guys. Um, a few people have been telling me to get the silencer removed, but as I said, I'll be talking about that in, in videos. To, in my next, probably my next two videos, I'll go through the madness of what I'd hope to do to the car. She don't like the fact that I'm gonna do stuff to it. She's like, I want my own car now, because it's just gonna be loud and antisocial. But it's my car. You lost yourself. <sighs> yeah, but. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you have not. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Look at her. Oh.